So continuing our discussion about the therapy for asthma class, in this video, we will talk about the methylxanthines. And the methylxanthines that are used in asthma treatment include the aminophilin and the theophilin. And it is very important to mention that both of these medications are no longer recommended by the GINA guidelines for treatment of asthma. And that is since 2018. And the same applies to the gold guidelines for treatment of COPD. Both of these guidelines don't recommend them anymore. And the reason behind that is that their risks outweigh their benefits. But we will still explain them here since they are still used in many parts of the world because they are cheap. So in this video, we will talk about the methylxanthines classification, mechanism of action, pharmacokinetics, therapeutic uses, adverse effects, precautions, and drug interactions. So these medications are classified as bronchodilators in treatment of asthma, same as with the beta-2 adrenergic agonists and the muscarinic receptor antagonists. Now examples of the methylxanthines include the caffeine, the theophylline, the theobromine, and the aminophilin, which is the salt of the theophylline. And the methylxanthines that are used in treatment of asthma include the theophylline and the aminophilin. Now let's talk about their mechanism of action. So the methylxanthines work by non-competitively inhibiting the phosphodiesterase enzyme, the phosphodiesterase enzyme 3 and 4. And this would lead to increase the levels of the cyclic AMP and the cyclic GMP, leading to multiple effects. So higher levels of cyclic AMP and cyclic GMP from the non-competitive inhibition of the phosphodiesterase enzymes would lead to relaxation of all smooth muscles, including the bronchial smooth muscles, leading to bronchodilation, the GIT, the biliary, the uretric, etc. Now higher cyclic AMP and GMP would lead to cardiac stimulation, which lead to increased cardiac contractility and arrhythmogenic effect. And this would also lead to central nervous system stimulation, and it would lead to vasoconstriction of the cerebral blood vessels and vasodilatation of the peripheral blood vessels. And because of the vasodilatation of the peripheral blood vessels, this would lead to higher renal blood flow, which lead to diuresis. Now, the methylxanthines also work by antagonizing the adenosine receptor A1, A2, and A3, leading to multiple effects. So, the adenosine is a bronchoconstrictor, so blocking its receptors means there is bronchodilatation, and adenosine has inhibitory effect on the CNS, it signals mental fatigue. So blocking its receptor on the CNS would lead to CNS stimulation. And also antagonizing the adenosine would increase the AV conduction, which may lead to arrhythmias. Now methylxanthines also work as a histone deacetylase activator. And the histone deacetylase work to prevent inflammation so activating the histone deacetylase lead to anti-inflammatory effect and that work in the benefit of asthma. So again, methylxanthines work by inhibiting the phosphodiesterase enzymes. They also work by antagonizing the adenosine receptors and they work by as a histone deacetylase activator. Now regarding some important points of the pharmacokinetics of the methylxanthines. So the oral methylxanthines have a broadly fluctuating plasma drug concentrations, which made it fall out of favor in clinical use. 
and the IV formulations have more consistent plasma drug concentrations and it is used more. Now moving on to talk about their therapeutic uses. So the methyl xanthines are used in respiratory diseases. So the FDA approved theophylline and aminophilin in treatment of asthma, bronchitis, and emphysema. But the new GINA guidelines, which are published in the 2018, don't recommend them anymore in treatment of asthma. And same applies to the gold guidelines, they don't recommend it in treatment of COPD. And that is because their risks outweigh their benefits, and we will explain why is that in the adverse effects section of this video, but these medications are still used in many parts of the world because they are cheap. So they are used in treatment of chronic bronchial asthma, so the oral theophylline is used as a second line after the beta-2 agonist and the inhaled corticosteroids, which are the first line, so the oral theophylline is the second line in treatment of chronic asthma, and they are used in acute severe asthma, so the IV aminophilin or theophylline are indicated for termination of acute bronchospasm in asthmatic attack. Now, other methyl xanthines, like the caffeine, they are used for central nervous system uses, such as to reverse CNS depression and to delay physical and mental fatigue. So the caffeine is used for delaying the physical and mental fatigue and for treatment of migraine. So the caffeine is combined with ergotamine for treatment of migraine to increase vasoconstriction because remember, methyl xanthines cause cerebral vasoconstriction and increase absorption of the ergotamine from the GIT. And they are also used for neonatal apnea syndrome, so the caffeine is the agent of choice in treatment of neonatal apnea syndrome. And they have their cardiovascular system uses, such as the acute pulmonary edema due to left-sided heart failure. Now let's talk about the adverse effects of these medications. So the metal xanthines have a narrow therapeutic index, meaning the dose that is used to achieve effect is too close to the dose that achieve toxicity. And this means there is a high incidence of side effects because it is easier now to reach the toxic dose since the effective dose is closer to the toxic dose. And side effects include central nervous system side effects. Those include irritability, headache, insomnia, nervousness, and convulsions. And those occur from the overstimulation of the central nervous system. The cardiovascular side effects occur because of the overstimulation of the cardiovascular system, and they include palpitations, tachycardia, and arrhythmias. And the rapid IV injection of these medications can cause hypotension, syncope, and cardiac arrest. So these medications are not given by rapid IV injections, they are given by slow IV infusions to avoid these side effects. Now they also may lead to gastrointestinal side effects. Those include nausea, anorexia, hyperacidity, and worsening of peptic ulcer because of the hyperacidity. Now let's talk about the precautions. So the aminophilin and the methyl xanthines in general must be given by slow IV infusion for more than 15 minutes to avoid syncope and cardiac arrest. And they are used with caution in cardiovascular disease, hepatic impairment, hypo or hyperthyroidism, seizure disorder, and pregnancy. And they should not be given to patients with peptic ulcer because it leads to hyperacidity. Finally, let's talk about the drug interactions. So the methyl xanthines are metabolized by the liver CYP enzyme system. And since they have narrow therapeutic index, 
This means that they are highly affected by the CYP enzyme inhibitors such as the erythromycin leading to higher serum levels of these medications and toxicity and they also are highly affected by the CYP enzyme inducers such as smoking leading to decrease their serum levels and reduce effects. And there is increased risk of arrhythmia when combining beta-2 agonists with these medications in the same time because both are arrhythmogenic. And with that, we reach the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please give us a like, comment your ideas and questions, and subscribe. And this video is a part from the therapy for asthma class. You can check it out. Link will be in the description of this video.